Doctors told Charlie and Colin Worgan not to have children, but they didn't listen and conceived the child. What happened next shocked not only the doctors, Charlie and Cullen, but the rest of the world. Charlie and Cullen Worgan are a happy couple from Sydney, Australia. They both suffer from dwarfism. They live happily together in a beautiful suburb in Sydney, Australia. Charlie and Cullen share a lot of the same interests and have a lot in common. They met for the first time in college and hit it off immediately. Charlie and Cullen found out that they got along naturally. It wasn't long before the two fell in love and got married. But the fact remained that both Charlie and Cullen were suffering from dwarfism. They had to face the adversities and struggles that came with the condition. Charlie suffered from achondroplasia, a genetic condition that affects a protein in the body called the fibroblast growth factor receptor. Due to abnormal functioning, this protein drastically stunts the growth of bones and cartilage. Fortunately, people who have achondroplasia form of dwarfism can live long, normal, and happy lives with only delayed and stunted development during their infancy. Cullen, on the other hand, suffers a form of dwarfism called geliophysic dysplasia. Geliophysic dysplasia is a rarer and more serious form that affects many parts of the body, most commonly affecting the bones, joints, heart, and skin. It is a progressive condition, meaning that geliophysic dysplasia continues developing throughout the person's life. Geliophysic dysplasia has an extremely high infant mortality rate because it affects the heart and the lungs. Around one-third of babies suffering from geliophysic dysplasia die before the age of five. Luckily, if you make it past the age of five, you're relatively in the clear. Cullen was one of the lucky ones. Both Charlie and Cullen were subject to social torment. People would make fun of their small stature and call them all kinds of insulting and hurtful names. Despite this, both Charlie and Cullen were thick-skinned and didn't let such abuse get to them. Their strong will is reflected in their desire to be together and even wanting to start a family. Charlie and Cullen had been married and had their own home for several years. It is only natural that having a child was the next step. However, despite their best efforts, they were struggling to conceive a child. The pair decided that they should check in with their doctor. Perhaps they would be able to run some tests or give them some hints and tips on how to successfully conceive a child. But to Charlie's and Cullen's unpleasant surprise, their doctor advised them against having children. The doctor had strong reservations about the safety and health of the child. If two people with dwarfism conceive, there is a strong chance that the baby will inherit the dwarfism from either one or both of the parents. There were four possibilities that might occur. The doctors conveyed which were, number one, a baby of average height, number two, achondroplasia, the same form of dwarfism as Charlie, number three, geliophysic dysplasia, the same form of dwarfism as Cullen, number four, our baby would inherit both genetic variations known as double dominant dwarfism, which from all professional medical evaluations would be fatal upon birth. If the child was to receive a double dose of the dwarf gene, then the likelihood of the condition is massively increased. It was a serious risk that Charlie and Cullen needed to consider. Charlie would be given the right to choose whether to terminate or risk the birth if the worst scenario unfolds. In addition to this, doctors warned that if Charlie and Cullen conceived and the child died in the womb, the consequences could be fatal for Charlie. Still, a glimmer of hope remained. Because a child conceived by two people with dwarfism might only inherit dwarfism from one of the parents. In fact, there is around a 25% chance that the child will not inherit it at all. There was a chance that they would produce a normal child. Was this a risk that the couple was willing to take? Before long though, Charlie discovered that she was in fact pregnant. The couple had stopped trying to conceive and so this came as a surprise. The news was a delightful one for sure, a blessing in disguise. Charlie was pregnant for 38 weeks she remembered how nervous she felt when she was in the operating room while she was in labor. Due to her condition, it was extremely risky for her to give birth vaginally. She had to undergo a C-section. Under anesthesia, Charlie felt nothing. She could only hear Cullen telling reassuring words in her ear. 
but as Charlie was laying down in the cold operating room, she could only look up and hope for the best. Charlie eventually gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Tilba. Minor complications occurred. Tilba came out blue because the umbilical cord had been around her neck. But Tilba was eventually fine. She was the firstborn who inherited achondroplasia, her mother's form of dwarfism. In less than two years' time, the couple were expecting their second child, another girl. Charlie was exhausted during her pregnancy, as she had to take care of her two-year-old Tilba. She was constantly sleep-deprived and had little to no energy. However, at 12 weeks, when most are celebrating the joy of being able to announce pregnancy, Charlie was lining up for chorionic villus sampling, or CVS, a process in which a needle has to be injected through her abdomen to check her baby's genetics. It carried a 2% risk of miscarriage, but luckily everything turned out okay. Coincidentally, Charlie's second pregnancy also lasted 38 weeks. On the day of the required C-section, Charlie braced herself once more for the medical procedures that she would have to undergo for her beloved baby girl. This was Charlie's second time, so she felt more at ease. She was more familiar with the procedures, and before she knew it, Charlie soon regained consciousness. Thankfully, the C-section went without a hitch. Charlie gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Tully. Tully inherited geliophysic dysplasia, the same form of dwarfism as Cullen. After Tilba and Tully were born, Charlie set up an Instagram account on which she shared photos, videos, and stories about her family's life. People from around the world took a great interest in this family of people who were all suffering from dwarfism, and it wasn't long before Charlie had amassed hundreds of thousands of followers. The followers all supported her and praised the family for being so strong and open. In return, Charlie would open up her family's life and share intimate details of how the family felt and coped. They once again tried for another child, eventually conceiving. In the 16th week of Charlie's pregnancy, she got a gender ultrasound. To Charlie and Cullen's delight, their third child was a baby boy. On the day of the birth, Charlie was wheeled into the hospital. Charlie cannot help but feel nervous. This time, it felt different from the other two births. Charlie had to brace and withstand the agonizing pain of her contractions. The birth was an obstacle to overcome. It lasted for 36 hours. It felt like forever. She persevered, however, and finally gave birth to her third child, Rip. The miracle left Charlie, Cullen, and the doctors and medical staff shocked beyond belief. Doctors ran a multitude of tests and checks, but they had soon confirmed it. Rip was miraculously born completely free of dwarfism. He had not inherited the dwarf gene from either his mother or his father. Against all odds, Rip was completely healthy and would grow up to a normal height. He would one day tower over his parents and everyone was shocked by the news, with many believing it to be a miracle. The chances of the child avoiding the gene were incredible and medical staff were shaken by this development. The doctors had initially criticized Charlie and Cullen for proceeding to have children, but they had quickly been proven wrong. I've coped with the criticism for choosing to have babies with these odds of them having dwarfism, but that's a whole conversation in itself said Charlie via her social media channels. I just want to say that bringing a child into the world with my odds is no simple decision, despite what people told me. And defying all medical logic and rationale, Charlie and Cullen had not only two healthy children with dwarfism, but also a perfectly healthy child untouched by the condition. The chances of that happening were slim, but Charlie and Cullen managed to pull it off. It just goes to show that even though the odds may be heavily stacked against you, the chances of complete failure are very rarely zero. What do you think of this amazing story? How do you feel about Charlie and Cullen overcoming adversity? Against all odds, they created not one but three miracles of life. Thanks for watching, and we would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below.